Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday on this beautiful, nearing the end of summer. It goes by so quick. It really does. And I don't know if it's a good, bad, a good or bad thing, but it is what it is. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to talk about yesterday. Yesterday was interesting. So there's some neighbors that are pretty cool and they, I don't really know them very well, but they're always like across the street doing their thing. And not that I want to get to know all my neighbors like intimately or anything like that, but it's nice to just to chat for a second and have a reason to chat because there isn't always a reason to chat and I'm not always outside and this is with my dog. And so, um, and they have a dog too. So I don't want our dogs to get together because it already happened, but my dog was up here and their dog was down there, but my dog did catch a virus <laughs> and so did I during that brief change. But yesterday, for some reason, uh, they were, well, I wanted to buy one of their snow cones cause they were selling snow cones out of their front yard. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to do an experiment just to see how, how, um, contagious this, this virus is. And if I, would I get it from a neighbor? Um, because I've talked to some of my neighbors and, and, and that they didn't, you know, they weren't sick or anything. They didn't have any issue, but, um, but the, the neighbors across the street, they have a lot of people. So I know there's a lot of stuff going on in and out. And I think when I went over there to, to, wait to get the snow cone. It's like a dollar for a snow cone. So I can afford a dollar. I think she was sniffing or something like she was sniffling. So I'm like, okay, so she's probably a little bit sick. Okay. But I'm like, okay, I'm going to see, you know, I'm, I'm still going to buy the snow cone and chat with her for a minute. So I did bought the snow cone, ate, ate part of it. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's a lot. So anyways, um, this morning or like, yeah, like last night I was coughing. I was coughing like a deep cough. Like you would not believe a deep cough. I'm like, oh my God. It felt like I was in the middle of another COVID type of thing. Like I experienced a couple months back. And I'm like, oh my God, is this going to be like the Lambda, you know, or Delta Plus? I mean, I was, everything was going through my mind that I would, I caught another version of it. And I'm just like, okay, well, I just coughed, blew my nose, coughed, blew my nose. I think my dog coughed a little bit, but that's about it. Um, she didn't have any issue as far as I could see. She didn't, she didn't pee the bed, so it wasn't that strong of, a, of an influence. But yeah, so this morning I blew my nose a lot. Like I coughed a lot last night as if I was sick. And then this morning I blew my nose. I did sleep, you know, for a minute, um, but I did blow my nose a lot this morning and pooped and all that stuff. And so I'm just like, okay, so this variant is very, 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 you know, is very contagious. Um, if obviously if I was a lesser person with backed up weak lungs, like my first in lines of defense, if they were not on par, yeah, that, that virus would have done a number on me or anyone else that ha would have an issue. Cause I didn't wear a mask. I wanted to see just, and it's, I'm telling you it, if you go to houses that you, you don't normally go to you will catch something. And if you don't have what it takes to handle it, oh my God, that's, see, we have people that like, we have a person that hangs out with us occasionally on the weekends just because my husband fixes his car. And so the neighbor drops by and he's a cool dude. And so, you know, but he doesn't have anything, you know, he, and we never, I never caught anything from hanging out with this person out in the front. But as soon as I went to that other person's house, they had a lot going on in that household, a lot of viral energy. Because I wanted to see, I wanted to see how exactly, you know, if as soon as you're in presence of someone you don't normally hang out with, what will happen? And I, I did notice her sniffling and I'm like, okay. And I did get her, her snow cone, which I'm sure, you know, her, her hands were over. It's, it's in her vicinity and her family's vicinity. Nothing wrong with the person, but people have different levels of viral energy in their household. And it's very contagious, especially if you have not hung out with this, these people for 
a while or a long time or whatever, or you don't even know them. And that's the, that's the thing is if I was in a cured state, I wouldn't notice the amount of energy, but my immune system would, would kick in and build up the antibodies. But some people can't handle that energy either. So on both ends, if I didn't have what it takes to handle the virus in the environment, just it being airborne, I would have issues. And even if I was in a cured state with a therapeutic or taking all my pills and powdered supplements, if I was that kind of person, um, either I'd be suppressing the energy when I feel something, which I'm not going to do, or a person would be under that programming of the therapeutic, of which then the immune system would be activated based upon that exposure. And that's still energy still being triggered, of which some people can handle and some people cannot. And so that right there tells me that this is going to be very interesting this fall and this winter, especially during the holidays. Now, I've said I'm not going anywhere for the holidays. I'm not doing nothing with nobody. And I know it can be pretty offensive because it's, it's you know, people all want to hang out in the holidays. And that's not going to happen because just by me going across the street to someone that I that I don't even really know that well or have ever been exposed to their world. Imagine what the holidays are going to be like. People are going and traveling and seeing each other from different places. And you know the airlines are going to be full of people. And then with all the therapeutics going on, and then with all these concerts that even CNN is promoting, the rallies, the the all, all the fairs, I'm just like, oh my God. And I'm not one to be like afraid of any kind of sickness. No, I'm not afraid of it. It's just, it's a lot of energy to deal with and to upgrade. And so when you think about it, the universe is the energy petri dish of evol- energy petri dish of evolutionary pain. So how I came to, to to bring petri dish and the universe together was because the other day when I posted that picture of the petri dish that shows all the different bacteria in the solution, and it looked like the universe of galaxies and it's different bacteria and different cells and different things that uh, grow in a petri dish, okay? My, my, the microbial diversity, diversification of life, microbial biodiversity is like looking at the universe in a petri dish. And it's always evolutionary things going on. There's always chemical reactions going on. Um, like I said, the dark matter are like latent zombie viruses that are not advanced enough to be woken up unless there is a specific data and the strength of photons to then wake up the virus to start galvanizing elements together to form planets or to form other things. And yeah, you have to have planetary dust to do that. But uh, the the dark matter inside a Petri dish is that it is the, the stable, it's like a virus energy that isn't, it hasn't been uh, triggered. And so you have all the other bacteria that are full of viruses. Because remember, bacteria are run by a virus. Yes, they're run by energy, but it's run by a virus. Because all viruses are energy and they're intelligence. And they direct things to replicate. Because things just don't spontaneously happen. It must have some kind of intelligence. Even replication with like an, a single amoeba is still intelligence. It's not advanced intelligence, not like a human that has so much microbial species in it that there's so much community of intelligence. No, there are some uh, viral entities that are single cell that have a very lesser influence of intelligence, but still nonetheless, it is intelligence. So when you look at the universe, now that's like a macro level of intelligence that has order and it has chaos relative to the energy being applied to it. And so all that energy is evolutionary pain. Now, a little amoeba is not going to have the vocabulary and the, and the way to articulate and the way to verbalize it being in pain when it's going through a replication stage or an evolution, you know, that type of thing. I mean, it, it, you'll see under a microscope the splitting of the cells or the, the gravitational pull of other things bringing it closer to it because yes, the larger the mass, the more gravitational pull it has. And that's like the force equals mass times acceleration. I mean, the laws of motion are very much in play in a Petri dish, no different than in the universe. Okay. And so when I, yesterday being, since I'm on my period, um, and it came right after 
this weirdness with, I don't know, with COVID stuff. Cause I have COVID for like the two weeks and then other stuff. So May. And so I think that's right. No, that was like July, right after COVID July, I wasn't sure I was getting my period again. I don't I don't even know, but finally I had my period yesterday. So at the end of the month versus the beginning or even in the middle. And I drank some coffee to energize my immune system in my body. It's not taking anything away. Actually, it's adding to, it's adding to, it's, it's triggering the hormones and my body's recoding with the food. And so my hormones, like my adrenaline will be replenished with the food supply and with the meat and all that. So there's a worry of me taxing my adrenals. But um, I knew as soon as soon as I ate food after drinking coffee and I'm feeling so hungry, that's why I don't want to drink too much like like, like um, high energy coffee because I get hungry. And then when I when I eat, especially if I'm on my period, then it's it's the cramps are painful. Why are the cramps painful? Because it's recoding my uterus. And that's why pain is or that's why evolution is painful, because it is not only recoding, but it, it also is uh, going through its energetic processes. And so I definitely am going to have this as a chapter because the universe is the energy petri dish of evolutionary pain because there's always conception going on. There's always little big bangs going on all the time. And especially in this dynamic environment. So prior to the COVID, we didn't have a very influential virus that will do a massive recoding on a large population, it was like we would have intermittent um, mutations of what we already have as like the flu virus with little few things are not as as um, communicable. I mean, there was like the Ebola virus. I mean, there's Zika, there's the AIDS virus, which was sexually transmitted and, and through different um, bodily fluids, but even that kind of lost its luster over time. And there was like antibiotics and things that people used to keep that at bay. So that wasn't even a major issue. I mean, it was in the eighties, but it has waned over time as far as the influence. So you didn't hear too much about it. And you hear the Zika virus and the SARS out in China. And I was in China when SARS was going on. And that's why I couldn't fly in country during the last week because I got the yellow fever shot. And that also kind of put me under the weather and gave me a little bit of a fever, which then alarmed the Chinese officials. Okay, well, you can fly home, but you can't fly between the different regions. So, okay, fine. Um, but this this new virus is so influential, so much energy, and it will produce a lot of um, evolutionary energy. And it's, 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 it's painful. And our population who is trying to not to evolve and not be in a cured state, but they're trying to be in a cured state, but it's, it's, you can, you can only be in a cured state for so long. It's so temporary. That's why they're saying that these therapeutics are only lasting very, very short amount of time because the evolutionary energy and the mutations and the transmogrification, the transformation of this virus as it's worked through the population is so exponentially aggressive that any kind of cure that you take is not going to last you very long. And so people are under this false sense of like, either they take on the energy and their body absorbs it, but it does a number against them. Because I know it's my husband, he gets exposed to a lot. I and mean, he's out there in the community all the time. I don't hear him ever sniffle. Maybe I hear him cough occasionally, but I don't hear him ever sniffle or blow his nose the way I blow my nose. And you see me blow my nose the way I blow. It's pretty intense. And so some people are taking on all these viruses, but they're not releasing in a balanced way. And so then you have, yes, a community of viruses that are working against each other. And these viruses are also uh, uh, inhabiting the microbiome because you have other viruses, you have parasites, protozoa, proteins, fungus, and bacteria. And they all are a, a quorum of, of innovation, but they all must be working together. And when they're not working together, you'll notice it, okay? Because you will start contracting cancer disease, chronic illness, autoimmune disorders, and all that, of which then something needs to come in and mediate between the two and be like, okay, I'm going to silence you or cure you. I'm going to give more energy to you. It's like a conductor of an orchestra, knowing what parts of the band or parts of the orchestra need to be played at whatever time. And it is like, you know, it's frequency. 
We don't want to have too much frequency over here because that's what happened in the Capitol riots. There's just so much frequency over here that there was chaos. And then other parts of the country was very calm. But the, the government doesn't want that much energy in one place. That's called cancer. When cancer is destructive, it means it's so much energy is being emitted that it is taking up resources. Because obviously, when you have riots and you have activism and you have all these people that are going out in the streets and committing you know, violent acts or they're hurting each other, that's an explosive amount of energy that needs to be quelled. Because you can't live with that on a daily basis. You'd never get anything done. It'd be, it's unproductive. Now, when it comes to evolution, when it comes to moving from one plane to another, that, that transformation is like a cathartic moment. And when you're angry at somebody, when you feel pain, uh, when somebody is just speaking whatever truth they have and it just hits you in a certain way, that's evolution. Okay? That's evolution because it's new information that you're trying to resist because you've been under this spell of being this certain way. And now you're getting new information that, believe me, if it was new information that you knew about and you understood, it wouldn't affect you. But when things affect people, when, when there's an influence that affects people, it's because that person, regardless of what they say, it's evolving them. I mean, let me tell you, the trolls evolved the hell out of me. They forced me to go figure this shit out or lest be made fun of and always being, you know, uh, poked and prodded. But let me tell you what my information is going to save their life if they would just get out of their own way. Okay. So any kind of um, new information that you're resisting or it strikes you in a specific way or you're feeling angry at, it's an evolution. Welcome the new information. Okay, because you can't even be indifferent to evolution because it'll still work against you because either way, you're going to have to support it or it will destroy you. And most of society cannot handle evolution. It's going to destroy them because guess what? How they react to painful evolution is they try to quell it with antibiotics with chemo, with radiation, with starving themselves, you know, with all the distractions of cannabis and alcohol and indiscriminate snacks. I mean, I'll tell you what, our society as a whole, that's why I really don't get into many arguments on the mainstream when they're talking about this, this and that, whatever it is, something political of the day, because I know what people's mindsets are in. They don't want to feel any evolution. And if I tell them that, you know, viruses are evolution, you got to support it correctly, you got to deal with pain, you must eat all food in the food supply, stop with your vegan and vegetarian diets, I would be attacked left and right. Okay, so I'm just saving myself the energy of being attacked, saying, you know what, it's your, it's your funeral. This, it's your life. Um, if I like your comment and you choose to look at my page and you're like, oh, it's the crazy jilly juice girl, and then finally something resonates, that was meant to be. So even my presence in groups, my presence in liking strangers' comments or even commenting, that's an invitation to check out my world to see if there's any kind of opening for you. But I don't do that all the time because, let me tell you, I don't want to waste my energy on every single person. And, you know, I like to, it's like, I don't know. It's like, it's like playing your own personal God because all of you can do the same thing. You can go on, on pages and have things on your page that are very evolutionary to help the world out. And then you go and comment on somebody in a nice way or maybe in like a bit of a new information way without it being inflammatory. And they check you out. And they're like, oh, wow, this person is has some really interesting information. This is going to help me. And or maybe, you know, the way you you write stuff is very um, universal that everybody can understand. And that does take time to learn how to, to, to speak to everybody's listening because we all have a common ground and that is that we all want to live. Let me tell you, there is nobody out there that says that they don't want to live because even the ones that say, I don't want to live forever, they still want to live. They don't want to die today. They don't want to die tomorrow. So I don't even listen to those say, oh, who wants to live forever because they don't want to die today or they wouldn't be getting all of their treatments. Okay. But they're just under this spell of the medical holistic industry that they can buy themselves time when nowadays you don't even know when your time is going to be because the 
environment is that dynamic. And it'll just be, it'll just happen like that. You won't have, like, you won't have any time to go take your pills and your powders and supplements. You already went through the several insurance policies called symptoms that you've then gotten antibiotics for. So you've ignored the indicators that let you know, uh, maybe you need to change your belief system. Okay. And so people are taking their insurance policies and instead of buying or instead of taking care of their bills, literally and figuratively, they go and spend it on things that destroy them, <laughs> like chemotherapy, like radiation, like cannabis, like whatever else is out there that's going to quell the energy, doing the surgeries, taking stuff out. And so, yeah, I, I, I see that our society definitely needs to go through an upgrade. It needs to go through a change and it's happening and it's not joyful to watch because, you know, you know, this, this fall and this winter and spring is going to be a doozy because already people are falling to the tumors and the cancers. They're getting tests done and the atmosphere is still only get that much more aggressive. It's not going to let up. So those should be indicators to seriously change the way you look at things. But if that isn't an indicator and you still be like, oh, I don't care. That's hard for me to get. That's hard for me to relate to. And so that's kind of why, why I am an island unto myself, because it's hard for me to watch it, people in this atmosphere destroy themselves. OK, um, because if I'm going to have a friendship with anyone, I want them to be around for a while. And I want them to, to feel like, like, you know, that there is a symbiotic relationship that I take their advice. They take my advice. We find a happy medium somewhere. It's not only just one person just dictating the relationship rules and it's only what they want and what they need. And that's it. And I have no say in nothing. I mean, that isn't a relationship for me at all. So it's easy to just stick with those that you are working directly with or you're taking care of, like my dog and my husband. And I still give out information because I do care about the people in the world that I live in. No, I'm not going to save them. There's no saving anybody, but at least dropping the seeds because we are going to see evidence of what I'm saying, you know, if not now, uh, you will see it in the future. And that's some, that's one of the things like on CNN, I do watch a lot of CNN, not because I think they know everything. I mean, they're just reporting what's go, being, you know, they're reporting stuff, but uh, they have their own spin on it. So as long as I change the narrative a little bit and figure out, okay, I know what their intention is, but they're going to report it this way. I get it. But they're saying that, you know, until it, until people start seeing people in their lives drop like flies, whoever they are, perfectly healthy people they think is perfectly healthy or perfectly managed in the system and they don't survive. If it takes that, then they will take this shit seriously. And it's happening in southern parts of the U.S. Now, the reactions to people dropping like flies are not necessarily going to be 100% because they're seeing more people getting therapeutized and vectored because they're watching their friends and family drop like flies. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if it, if it, that's what it takes to have that kind of event in your life, then so be it. Do I necessarily want to watch it? Not really. So I am what I am, but let me tell you, evolution is not easy and it's painful and people are not going to like you for being evolutionary because they're used to being in this, they're used to just thinking that they can do the shortcuts. Like, you know, this guy Giovanni was saying, I'd rather do a shortcut if it's being offered. Okay, I get doing the shortcut if it's being offered, but that shortcut is gonna work against you. Yes, it's gonna give you that stay of execution for however long based upon your, your biochemistry and how it interacts with the environment. But remember, you also have predispositions. You also have people in your world that have died from cancer, disease, and chronic illness. And if you hold that programming within and then a virus, a large like swath of a viral upload affects your immune system. And they're saying that, yes, these, some of these vaccines are only going, or these vectors are only going to be very temporary. And then you get a total upload of something completely different than what you've been vectorized, it could actually um, trigger that programming to start replicating 
very quickly, like waking up the beast that you forgot or you didn't even know was in you because you weren't aware of predispositions and what your family dealt with. Okay? And so the shortcuts will also work against you. But you can't tell someone that who is enjoying their youth. When you're young and you're 30 and you're in your prime and you're in a great industry, whatever it is, and you think that you're invincible, and if you can get the shortcut and be like compliant so you don't have the government come at you or you have anyone going after you for whatever reason, you know, that's fine. That's that, like anything, a secured state. It's temporary. That's the, the false sense of security uh, people are under is that they think that they can still do the same thing today as they did like like before in a different environment. And sorry, but that's not going to fly. I mean, it, it might for certain people, but it might not. And that's the gamble that people are, are taking when they don't realize how aggressive this environment is. And so, and so anyway, so the painful recoding DNA with food is when exposed to a new virus programming. Yeah, that's why I say do the reset with J-Juice, you know, several times. And yeah, you might trigger like a constipation, which happened with me too. And it, I did all the digital method, everything I could to get it out. Um, I did a lot of waterfalls for a couple years and I, I lost so much weight. I was so skinny, like super skinny. And that would not fly in this environment. However, um, there are ways to get the poop out using probiotic yogurt, like Activia, um, coffee with cream, the triple shot, Starbucks. If you don't drink coffee, then do the Activia yogurt, do a bunch of it. But you want to be able to get the poop out without taking away substance from your body. And so resetting your body first is like first and foremost to get rid of the excess programming that's causing the glitches. And then you recode your body with a food supply of which then yes, can be a little painful for some people, especially when they have already avoided and thought that a tomato was poisonous or thought that a potato was poisonous or meat was poisonous, which Yes, it's going to be very difficult to deal with vegans and vegetarians that think that the soy is going to be everything. And I'm sorry, but um, you're going to need the meat in this society because we are the microbiome. OK, we are made up of a community of organisms like, again, viruses, parasites, protozoa, proteins, fungus and bacteria. And they all work symbiotically together. It's not like you just have proteins and that's it. It's not like you have just parasites and that's it. You have a community of organisms that could be infected if it's not balanced correctly. That's what infection is, is when you have um, your microbiome out of balance. That's why you have candida, which is why I started this to begin with. Candida is a yeast infection. You have more candida than your body is able to keep at bay. And so that thing is taking over. And then you have viral programming that is uploading into cells that are replicating very quickly because the rest of the body's at a deficit. And so it found a weakness and found, you know, a point where it can be very influential. And that's why people get cancers because their body's at a deficit. Even though, yeah, they look like they're muscly and they look like they're, they're obese, like they have a lot of substance, but yeah, I might have a lot of substance, but it ain't doing shit for you. And so then you have tumors and then those tumors will turn into cancer because the person is depleting and this new viral entity is like possessing them. It's taking over. So that's like the infection of viral, new viral entities that's not being brought in in an adaptable way. It's now looking to take over like any person who has a large amount of energy who has no consideration for people will try to go in and take over and suck the life out of the room. And I've been that way. My mom told me a long time ago that you have so much energy, Jillian, that you suck the life out of the room. I'm like, yeah, well, <laughs> I have a lot to say and you're trying to squelch my energy, of which I resisted for many, many years. And so so that's the, 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 the infection of viruses that are trying to take over that your body has not adapted to. And then you have the protozoa infections, your parasitic infections. Okay, parasites aren't bad because they are a mediator between you and the microbiome. But when you have deficits, the parasites proliferate to then help um, you process the food, just like the worms in the sand. They go and fertilize and process all the, the compost, break everything down because you can't do it yourself. So the parasites do it. That's why the worms, 
Okay, so when people are doing the J-juice with a lot of salt, they saw worms come out of their butt if they had a lot of parasites because of deficits. And so now find the body is able to get rid of the excess and you still have parasites, but not as numerous. Okay, but they're still there, but you're not trying to destroy them. And that's why the FDA and people are saying stop taking the ivermectin because that is poison. That's antibiotic. That's going to kill you. You're not, you're, you're not a horse. You're not trying to kill off your microbiome. But then the whole thing with the antivirals says the same thing, but they're not putting those two together. So when the system is promoting antivirals but telling you to get off of ivermectin, they're like speaking on both sides of the mouth because both things are antibiotic. They will destroy your microbiome because guess what? They're all kind of parasitic in a way. Viruses are parasitic too. And so when you destroy a parasite or a virus or anything like a protein, you destroy the host because you're the host. They all need a host and you're the host. So an antiviral destroys a host. An antiparasitic destroys a host. An antifungal destroys a host. An antiprotozoa destroys a host. An antiprotein destroys... I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, anything antimicrobial destroys the host. And you're the host. And your dog's a host. Your husband's a host. All your farm animals are a host. And you're taking things that destroy the host instead of mediating and leveling the playing field. People are destroying themselves at the micro level. And so... You know, that's the world that we live in right now because people don't understand evolutionary energy. Because, yes, even parasites that are evolving and even your proteins that are evolving, even the viruses in your body are evolving and they emit energy. And the energy could look like a beam of light or it could be like a painful sequence that you feel something that you actually have words for. Ouch. Oh, that hurts. Okay. Anything that you would say in reaction to a hot surface or a sharp shooting pain because your body's going through a neurological or going through a physiological um, type of sequence or upgrade. And when you know when you have seizures, it's still electrical. Anything electrical in a body is going to give off sensations of pain, or you can see bright lights. I remember while I was in pain from a muscle cramp that was so excruciatingly <laughs> energetic that I closed my eyes so hard. And I just dealt with it, but how that energy was then being released was the fact that I saw bright little white lights, little white lights. But I tell you what, I remember it was almost like when you watch something on a science fiction channel and they're going through some kind of like, I don't know, science experiment and the person arches their back and their eyes roll in the back of their head and they look like they're going through some kind of torturous thing. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, science fiction is science fact. That's what it's like when your body's going through an aggressive evolution, especially when you're at a deficit. So those are the things that some people in the J-Juice world have a hard time with because J-Juice is like a, has a curative effect, but you don't want that to work against you. You want it to be a catalyst to evolution to wake up the sleeping giants in your body, but you don't want to put them all in a cured state because you won't evolve and you won't replicate. When you're in a cured state, the universe and the environment is still going to work against you because that's still thermodynamics. Now we're bringing physics into this. Okay, because cell biology follows the laws of physics. So, yes, you bring up all the retroactive evolution from all the latent viruses that have been asleep, but then you feed them. And the ones that really mean something to you will fight for you. And the ones that don't will be in the toilet. And that's why I say you feed the beasts because the beasts that matter will definitely save your ass. And they'll be telling you things like you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Even your emotional pain over something will bring up a strategy that you're not even thinking of. Like I'm not very calculated, but all of my emotional pains have given me the outcome of my intentions or the intentions of my outcome or whatever, like my intention and my outcome are aligned. But I don't, I'm not, I'm not a calculating person. I don't go and say, okay, you know, I, I understand the art of war. I understand all the different strategies. But when I'm reacting to something that happened in my environment and I'm like just pouring my heart out all over Facebook and whatever, you know, I'm trying to protect myself, protect my husband, protect the world, everyone protect each other and not do things that are going to harm themselves or each other. And so then the fallout from that is then people will do their own thing. And maybe that needs to happen. Because people need to pay attention to them and theirs. 
and not be so involved in somebody else's world all the time because at some at some point you know when 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 our when our when our parents die when the people that we depended on so much for such a long time when they pass away what are you going to do i think about that all the time not like every day but i know the reality you know because if people don't want to deal with pain and they're just you know working themselves to death and they don't take a break really i mean what's the inevitable and so i'm aware of the reality of the world that i live in and so this is where you have to prepare yourself to be on your own in a lot of ways. It really is about you. I mean, it's nice to have people that it that you know you can count on that'll be there like forever, assuming that the environment can withstand you. But then there's a reality of it. Okay, so sometimes the the viruses within you that are trying to protect you will will have you eat something, will have you say something, will have you do something will put you in a, in a headspace to be very, very um, intentional in what you're doing. And so you have a lot of advisors in your body if you feed them, if you feed them. And the advisors will also get rid of the excess, the things that are going to cause them, you know, to be like the rotten apple in the bunch. Okay, that's why you poop every day. That's why you blow your nose. That's why you cough. The cough that I had yesterday just from being exposed to a neighbor that I've never really hung out with. But I wanted to get to know just for a second, not that I got to know them too much, but I wanted to meet them. And so I, this morning, last night, I coughed so deep and it felt great. Okay. And so that's you getting your first and second lines online of defense online so it can work to your benefit. So that way you can get rid, get rid of residual or unnecessary programming. Okay. And so that's all the JJ's does. It just gets your first and second lines of defense online so your third line is not being triggered. Because that third line of defense is a doozy to pull yourself out of. Right now we have people struggling. You know, the lady that, that's dealing with cancer that I was telling you about, you know, that they she's now in hospice and her daughter didn't make her juice for her. So hopefully her daughter's gonna make her juice for her, but she's like so what do I do in the meantime? I will do the salt water and take some Activia. She's like, I can't have anything by mouth to, 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 to no solid foods. And take the Activia yogurt drink. Drink that. Drink some salt water. But you need the nutrition. You cannot be starving. But that's what goes on towards the end of people's lives. It's so hard for them to process food because it's painful. That's the thing you have to understand that pain is evolution. And we're going through a massive, massive evolution right now. Massive. That even I have to evolve to my next door neighbor across the street. Okay? Imagine if I stayed there for longer than the 10 minutes I was there. And hung out with all of their the people. That would be insane. That's why I don't understand why people go out and hang out with a bunch of people all the time. Like, dude, that shit's in freaking insane. The amount of energy, especially going into different micro people who travel. What the hell? <laughs> oh, but you're supposed to be. Yeah, but that energy is going to work against you. You could be therapeutized and vectorized and show proof of this and proof of that. But it's still thermodynamics. And if you're not feeling something from all of your travels, then the you're being sucked dry. Those viruses are going to suck you dry. So that's why I'm just going to stay back because I want to evolve. If I get exposed to something, I don't want to put it in a cured state. I want it to make sure that my body is able to be fluid with the environment. And that means I expel. That means I feel whatever feelings. I feel the heat. You know, I, I make sure my dog feels okay that she can handle it and yeah when she when she went through her seizures you know I would just pet her on the on her belly as she's like on her side I'd be like it's okay sugar it's okay it's okay and she gets out of it I remember when, when she fell off the deck because she had a seizure going up the freaking deck and then she fell landed on her side and and she was kind of like dead weight and she didn't have the strength yet to get up on her legs to get up the stairs so I I had to carry a 60 pound animal dead weight up the stairs she finally came to and was able to get on her legs and walk to the door but that's the thing is that's what 
what you're all in for when it comes to evolution. I'm not saying it's going to be that aggressive because it wasn't that for me, but the headaches were insane. But if you have deficits and you have a lot of latent viruses that you have put at bay and a lot of stuff going on, you're going to feel the electricity. You're going to feel the universal evolutionary pain sequence that, yes, it's articulating, ouch, that hurts. And, oh, my God, I'm in pain, but it's also electricity. And that's the evolutions in the universe. Those are all the mini explosions. That's the Big Bang conception, reproduction, cell splitting, but at a macro level with a community of organisms. No different than when you see your whole community uprise against the aliens or something. That's your whole body going through an evolutionary stage. Because that's a lot, it's a large amount of energy all at once. Okay? So that's why, you know, do J-Juice. If you're not really used to pain, just transition onto it. Bring stuff up because you're going to feel it. It's all electricity. Just think of yourself as the Big Bang. Just think of Stephen Hawking when you're doing J-Juice. The Big Bang, the black holes, dark matter, the light matter. Okay? And uh, just expect it. And then when you go out there, you should be feeling something. And so those that are in industries where they have to be looking like they're in a cured state, you'll do J-Juice until it sucks the life out of you. And then you won't exist. Because you're too focused on being that icon to make the money and to look like you are successful. You're all successful. You don't need to prove it. How much money do you actually need? And that's what people are going to come to terms with. It's the fact that they are they have been living to excess because the system allowed it. Now the system saying, no, you can't live to excess anymore. But we're going to stop you at the micro level. That's what the crazy thing is. <laughs> That's why I'm like, holy crap. J-Juice is very much in line with the New World Order. Not that I plan it that way, but either you're in a cured state of decline or you're going to evolve and you're not going to want to deal with too many people because that's a lot of evolution to deal with all the time. And then you start working independently. And so the system has changed. They gave you an unfettered access like the rat utopia. Okay, if you look up behavioral sync by John C or John B. Calhoun, John B. Calhoun, he's an ethologist back in the 1950s. And he did that experiment with like 2000 rats where they where he gave them unfettered access to food, water, shelter, partners, and he watched them all uh, divide into their different factions, different hormonal, hormonal, whatever. And so there was definitely a division and then they started cannibalizing each other. And so probably that's why we're seeing, you know, a new reset because right now you're just watching your friends and family cannibalize each other. It's no different. Rats are not that different than humans, except that we have a lot more to us with, we can articulate with posable thumbs and rats, you know, are smaller. I remember watching Mrs. Frisbee and the rats at NIM or watching that or reading that when I was a kid. So they were telling us, yes, they're doing experiments on humans and animals and watch it and seeing the outcome and then now you're seeing everything being rolled out through the fda the cdc and all this and now you have a chance to evolve but you have to understand pain and if you don't understand pain then yeah your time on this earth is going to be very unpredictably short and i hate to be the one to bring the bad news but not really because i'm giving you access to understand what pain is and to feed it all food and yes food can be painful get over it but don't be doing j juice while you're eating food. I did before, don't do it anymore. You need to feel the pain, okay? You don't wanna be in a cured state of decline because the JGs will work against you and so will the environment and so will the Wi-Fi and all the electricity of the new viral transducers. You've gotta lessen the amount of, of energy against you. So you need the covalent bonding of the food supply, the meat, the milk, the cheese, the bread, the donuts, the fruits and the vegetables. And you need to relax. And don't chase after that much money because you don't need that much money. All right. Bye.